closed captioning for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Schroeder's Log Home Supply, supplying builders for over 20 years. Underwriting for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Extreme Interiors International, building log homes for over 20 years. But we don't stop at the structure. We expose the hidden art of nature, the diverse character of trees into your habitat. To us, it's not a building project, it's an art project. There are still a few American companies dedicated to bringing quality into your workplace. We are one of them. Quality Manufacturing Company. Quality too for quality work. Tenonizer Technology, an original equipment manufacturer dedicated to improving the quality of log construction for the log building family, finding better ways to bring a piece of the woods into your home. Great Woods Cabinetry is a full custom cabinet shop working projects from the start or just at the finish. From online to on site, check us out at www.greatwoodscabinetry.com. Well, we are continuing our series of a conventional home with logs in mind. Now this one, everything is going in after the fact. When George got a hold of us, house is already built, most of the structure is already in, so the log work that we're adding in here is all after the fact. But we want to put stuff in here that looks big, massive, looks like it's supporting columns and timbers and all grown together, put in in a manner where nothing will ever shift, no caulk, no caulk, okay, got it. And that's what we're going to do on today's adventure of A Piece of the Woods. Now this is really a work of art. And the joinery that's into this place and the column is the next post. But in order to get this post like basic idea of uh, what I wanted to do with uh, the view here. I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of exploit the view of uh, the panoramic view of the lake here and my uh, idea was to make like individual picture frames and to encase them in logs. Okay. So you so get kind of a... The beams, beams wrap, wrapping, wrapping each window? Right. And it kind of gives the illusion of pictures as you're looking through uh, this panoramic view. Well, it's a beautiful view out so, here. So uh, I sure. wanted to take advantage of that, have some of the outdoors with the log accent kind of brought in, so it kind of brings the outside of the house. Okay, so if we took, say like, you know, here and ran a beam all the way up, and, it, and right between these two windows, run a beam right. all the way up, and then fit something in between across the top here. Right, that's my idea, that's my and intention. It, but we don't need to put anything down on the floor, right? No, no. I Leave think that. Okay. It'll give it that. And then maybe we can fit a beam in up across the top and coming down the other side. Because we can take it this at this corner here, and we can put a long corner and just wrap this in right, right, right here. Wrap this corner in right. and come up. If you continue into the kitchen, great. If you don't, we can put, even if you do continue in there, we can still put a beam across the ceiling here it sort of, it would say, this is the area with the beam work, and it, you know, here's the kitchen. It won't physically separate anything, but it'll give a line of sight, something where, oh, beam work across the ceiling, cool. You know? Right, that's kind of my intention, is to kind of end it right here, uh, making this a separate entity room right here. Uh, later on, if I did decide, I could go on and continue, but this would be kind of a definite break point, just what you had suggested, putting the beam across there and on the corner. Which, of course, leaves <coughs> options for more log work through here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got nine feet exactly right at this corner. And then as we come across nine feet on this corner, and we're figuring to this exact point on the corner. Now that we go from that exact point across the floor to the corner here, we have 53 and 3 eighths to the exact corner here. And then we're going to go and map then again across the floor to the center of the next, the next beam. It's gonna look, as it goes together, it's going to look like a supporting column. We want this thing to, to look like all of this log work that goes in here. 
is a supporting structure, like it's supporting the house, supporting the roof, not just added on after. It's going to look like it's supporting everything. And then we're also going to use slip joints. Now, a slip joint, oh, let's see, this column will go up here, and the log that comes across here is going to actually slide into this vertical column. Now, it's going to look like this column is supporting this log here, and if this log shrinks any, even though this is going to be in the kiln and dried down, we're going to recut it to get the twist out of it, it's going to look like, because this log slides in here, that this one supporting th this other one right up here, and it's all, all grown together. So if anything shrinks, you'll never see it. You'll never see any shrinkage. Now, we have an exact perimeter. We have an exact point from, from right down here on the floor at this corner, right down here. We have an exact distance from there to the roof. Then from that top corner going up to the ridge, we have an exact distance on a 612 slope. And then from the ridge coming down to the next corner. And then from there down to the floor. And we are going to map that, put it all together, those exact dimensions on our pattern back at the shop, and make it all there laying down flat, flat, OK? So we don't have to take all the parts, put them up here, try and get it described together, and work with, no. Everything is going to be done laying down flat, where we can use gravity as our friend, OK? And then we'll bring it over here once it's all cut, fit, sanded, buff, and then just boom, and put it all right up in place. And it is a very, very nice system. This is our blueprint for our log trim going around the trapezoid windows. And we are working with center line design, and we do have absolutes that we can work with, even though it is log. We have the perimeter of our structure, which starts here, comes up to the, tucked right into the corner and comes up to the ceiling, comes up to the ridge, comes back down, down to the floor, and this builds our, the entire perimeter for our structure. Then we have the exact center of this beam, the exact center of this beam, and then these cross pieces will be laid, um, we're working again right off of the exact center of those coming across. Oh. So those are absolute distances, absolute points that we can work with. But then we're working with log, which is not an absolute. And we're think working with things that are rather heavy, so that can be a problem. We don't want to take it and put it together and try and fit it together on the wall. We would take a piece, put it up there, and you, know, you scribe it, and you take it back down, and three hours later you got one piece done. That's kind of a pain. It's a lot of work. So what we're going to do, we're going to make gravity be our friend. So we built this, our structure here, our framework, copied all the dimensions that are on our blueprint, and laid them on this whole framework that you see me walking around on here. And we're going to be working with center line design, and we're going to build this thing laying down flat. OK, so we still have a couple of things that end up being a potential problem, and that being that log work let's see, wood shrinks, which is a potential problem. Or if we take it from here on these dimensions back over to the house, and if things aren't slightly, or if things are slightly out of square, that can be a problem. So to overcome that, well, we'll illustrate first. Say, for example, uh, you scribe something together and it's nice and tight. Wonderful. But if things are out of square and you bring it back over to the house, that nice tight joint opens up a little bit. Or if you scribe it together and it's tight and it shrinks <coughs> and pulls apart, then again you have a gap. But what we're going to do, we're going to build this whole thing with slip joints. That's where this log actually slides into this other one. So if things are out of square a little bit, it won't hurt anything, won't bother. Or if things shrink and pull apart a little bit, you will still have a nice tight joint. Oh, my Lord. Oh, it's there is enough to make this all work. We've got a lot of material in there, but we've got enough for this grid work project too. But it's got to be pulled out, and it's got to, you know, it's the two thirds log and the one third log, and they got the twist and the hump now that they've dried down in the kiln. We'll get Josh to pull that out and cut them flat again and cut the twist and the hump out of them. And while he's doing that, let's us take a walk in the woods, okay? <laughs> okay. 
This box contains one cubic foot of air. Now the air that I'm breathing is about 18% oxygen content. I breathe in at 18 and I exhale at 16. I'm using 2% of the oxygen off the top. Now this scuba diving tank, if you squish 72 cubic feet of air into this tank, the air would weigh about six pounds and the oxygen that's in the air would weigh about one and a quarter pounds. That's enough for you to breathe for about one and a half hours. Or if you could use all of the oxygen in the air, that would be enough to last you 12 hours. Now tree growth produces oxygen. About <coughs> this much tree growth would be enough to supply me with oxygen for about a day. Oh. Ah, just kidding, I got more trees. Okay, so down. Very good, Josh. That's the last one now, right? Yeah. That's the end of them? Good. Now we can start putting this thing together. Okay, we're gonna get these things positioned. Now you can see that we've got a thickness difference here, of course, we got a bigger, fatter one, all the, all the verticals are basically two-thirds of a log, and all these pieces we're gonna splice into it that look like beam structure, massive holding power, are the one-third logs, okay? These are our lines for our perimeter mark here. This is going to be, this is right at the floor right here, this line right here. And then the corner of the, the wall that starts our center line that's actually tucked right into the corner. That's this line here. Now we're going to set up and bring the edge of the log up to this point. And then we're going to bring the other log in to scribe into it. And we've got two inches of space here that as we will make one scribe, and move over an inch and then make the second scribe that'll bring it up to this line which will be the finished edge of the log which is of course based on the exact center that's going to tuck right into the corner so it's a two scribe a two scribe two scribe process to get this slip joint built now in preparation for doing this project of a buddy of mine is Pat Scrimshaw. He was putting together a grid system that went on a ceiling, and he'd stopped over here and said, well, how do I do this? And I thought, okay, we've done a lot of this stuff, you know, similar to it before. So just lay it out and scribe it together and bring it up and get a joint here. Come across with your, with your, well, I'm using the bubble level one, but you don't need a bubble level scriber, just a, like a divider is all that's being used. And I said, well, just come across and, and mark your scribe like that cut it, fit it, bring it up against it, and then go to the next one. Well, <laughs> that part of it worked just fine, but when he got to the house to install this thing where he'd scribed all these things laying flat, no slip joints, just scribed tight, and he did a nice job of it. It really looked good. But when he got to the house and he started putting it together, the ceiling, even though it was 12 feet on each end and 16 feet on each, you know, the long side going across, those numbers were the same, but going corner to corner to measure it off, it was three inches out of square. <laughs> he had a fit in half, so we had to improvise the system. He experimented, we perfected. <laughs> so thanks, Pat. <laughs> so we're going to do first this, this cut here, where we're taking just an inch here, and we're going to cut this off and then slide it up against it and remark it for this cut that goes inside of this log. The one thing you want to have though, so you can slide it in there, you want this piece here where it's going to slide in to be flat. If this knot was all the way up here, 
I'd have to shave this knot off so it was flat, so it could slide straight in there with no distortion, okay? side out just to get rid of the most of the material I brought it up right up to the line that's right on the edge on each side just to get rid of the mass of material and then it also, also so it doesn't chip out when I cut from the other side Since this is two thirds, one third, see if I can get that right up into place there. Get in there. Ah. Okay. Now, see now if this was, if they're each the same size, like this log coming up to here, and where it came where it was flat across the top from this one to this one. See how now we couldn't do the slip joint because that's got to slide inside of there. Besides that, if it comes all the way up and they're both logs are the same size, that's a really tough cut to make look right. And when you're done, it still doesn't look right. So now we can just take and we'll mark here. And then we'll cut that. So it slides inside of there, so it's got at least an inch to travel inside of that, inside of that uh, joint. Now, each one of these is the same, and I know there's a lot of detail to make this whole project work, but we're not going to show you all these. <laughs> there's a lot more we need to show you along the way. The biggest challenge is once it gets back at the job site and then drawing it together, and we're going to use these little starbursty things and and get it all fitted together at the at the job site. It goes fast, but most of the work is done here. should fit pretty good. We'll have to check it, of course, but some people make carving a whole lot more difficult than it really is. You just keep taking out what it shouldn't ought to be there. in there about an inch and then when we get it to the job site we can get it so it gets so this piece here gets drawn up into the tight up, up against there but look how nice tight that fit is and we've got room if something wasn't very square which this one is very close but if it wasn't there's room here watch if I shift this down and I slide it down it still fits okay look at No need for caulk anywhere. Or if it was to shrink, you know, pull apart a little bit. And it still ends up looking nice and tight. As we go along here, we work from the one side, we'll be coming down the line. I got my center mark here for the next log. And as we come together, everything is positioned. So as we put it together, we got four inches of space between each one so that we can shrink it two inches, two inches, an inch at a time on each side, one inch for each cut, and get it all fitted together. But I tell you, this stuff is pretty much all the same as we go along. So let's do a time warp 
Time Warp, and we will see you out at the job site. There's a girder truss, a girder truss along here, and we're gonna be, the first log's gonna set up into place here, and then I'm gonna drill one hole into the log, and in that one hole, there'll be like five or six screws that go up, and I just wanna locate where that girder truss is so we get all the, everything's fastened, that nothing falls down while they're having dinner or something, you know? <laughs> Half a dozen screws and only one hole to plug. Now you can see why it is so much easier to build the thing on the floor rather than take each log, put it up there, scribe it, mark it, take it down, cut it, put it back up there and see if it fits. Much easier to do it laying down on the floor. Yeah. Well, that looks much tighter. Started out with a quarter inch relief. We started to use these, but of course the head of the screw just went straight into that quarter inch hole. So we're moving to a washer head, and that's not gonna hold, or it's not gonna go into the hole, it's gonna go and suck this right into place. Cover a second, let Ed change positions.
we got just a few more things to finish off here. They're putting in some more of those the starbursts to get those logs drawn into the wall nice and tight, get everything pulled in. Remember, this is a no caulk operation. So just got a couple things there, and then we'll come back and we'll plug the holes, and we got two little pieces to fit in. One right at the top corner right here, a 50 inch long piece, and then a, its counterpart on the other end of the room here. But I think this turned out just exceptionally well, putting it together on the ground and then bring it to the job site as a finished product in four hours and it's all up in place. That's, they, the guys did really good. more information about A Piece of the Woods Season 2 Conventional Building with Logs in Mind, go to www.apieceofthewoods.com. There you'll also find the Log Furniture Building episodes of Season 1. And remember, the woods is where treasure is hidden for you, not from you. Underwriting for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by... Extreme Interiors International, building log homes for over 20 years. But we don't stop at the structure. We expose the hidden art of nature, the diverse character of trees into your habitat. To us, it's not a building project, it's an art project. There are still a few American companies dedicated to bringing quality into your workplace. We are one of them. Quality Manufacturing Company. Quality tools for quality work. Tenonizer Technology, an original equipment manufacturer dedicated to improving the quality of log construction for the log building family, finding better ways to bring a piece of the woods into your home. Great Woods Cabinetry is a full custom cabinet shop working projects from the start or just at the finish. From online to on site, check us out at www.greatwoodscabinetry.com. Closed captioning for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Schroeder's Log Home Supply, supplying builders for over 20 years.